Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first ever episode of Collider's MMA Takedown, which is our MMA show. My name's Destin. I'm joined by... Hello, everyone. I'm John Roca. I just took down some Chipotle, so I'm ready to, to, hassle, to talk about all this stuff, talk about all these MMA things that are going on, and uh, you know, answer some of your Twitter questions as well. But I'm not the only one on this show. Who else is on the show, Dennis? Uh, we got Jay Williams from the Collider Afterthoughts. How are you doing, Jay? That's me, Jay to the A to the Y to the E. It feels good to come on here and not talk about something on Collider other than... <laughs> you know, people, people have this thing. They think that uh, all we do is talk shit about you guys. Mm-hmm. You know, it might be a little true, but now I'm, I'm ready to, to break well, down well, some now, No, no, no. Next time on Afterthoughts, you can just talk <laughs> shit about yourself. Yeah. Uh, it's a about little, this it's show. a little meta. Yeah, it's very yeah, meta. Yeah, um, and in Roca, who's on a bunch of Collider stuff, he yeah. hosts Collider Sports Time, which is our kind of flagship show for yeah. our Collider Sports YouTube and podcast network. Um, yeah. So if you guys are joining us here on the podcast or on our YouTube channel, make sure to subscribe. So this is our our, our MMA show. We, we, you know, this is a, a sport that I, I love. I follow uh, all the time. Uh, but I want to like you know kind of bring up like what the show is going to be about you know before we get started. Obviously, we're going to talk about Connor versus Khabib. We're going to talk about uh, Tyrone Woodley versus uh, Darren Till. We're going to mm-hmm. talk about some of the fights that were announced, Bellator, et cetera, et cetera. But just kind of our take of it. Look, I am no expert in MMA. I do not you know train in it. Uh, I'm not an MMA journalist. I will not be you know getting scoops. In stories, <laughs> I'm coming from a fan perspective, and I, I feel like uh, that's the way that uh, also Roka and Jay are yeah. coming at it as well. Yeah. Absolutely, I've been watching for a long time, for about ten years MMA, probably even before that, because I remember Royce Gracie and all mm-hmm. those matches that I used to watch those with my cousins, mm-hmm. my Latino cousins, going crazy, yelling at the screen with all the stuff that was happening. So I remember the beginnings of it, and I remember people essentially initially like made fun of it, and then as it progressed and became what it became, and you saw all these different fighting styles, it's amazing to go back and watch this. So to see the progression of it now, it's like an actual art form, actual craft. People spend a lot of time uh, studying it, and then be coming millionaires off of it, which really at the beginning was like insane to even think about. So it's it's been incredible how much it's grown. So it's always had an addiction in my heart. Yeah, Jay, how, how did you get into watching MMA? It's kind of funny. I used to be absolutely obsessed with uh, with WWF back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. And I used to go to, my parents used to take me to uh, the, the video store every single day during the summer and I ran <laughs> through all of the old WWF VHS tapes and there was a section of the earliest UFC matches mm-hmm. from like UFC 1 to I don't even know how how many they had but I was like what is this and I checked it out and I was like holy crap they're actually hitting each other this is real I thought it was going to be some WWF <laughs> thing it was something my dad and I sort of watched together carried it throughout the years and Really, really, really fell in love with it, like so many other people, via the Ultimate Fighter. Obviously, the the first season mm. with uh, with all of the stuff that happened there, it got it to this whole crossover success. And ever since then, man, I've just been super, super into it. And I think the the whole thing with it being a little bit oversaturated over the years, as I'm sure we'll dive into, maybe has weighed on my mm-hmm. my fandom, but. I think that's a good perspective to have because I think a lot of people out there feel the same way. Yeah, for me personally, I, I started watching. I mean, I heard about UFC. I knew about Hoist Gracie and Kim Shamrock, yeah. but I kind of like didn't totally fully watch. But then I started. Uh, I worked at a post production house, and we were doing uh, the the dubs for for America for Pride. Mm. And oh wow! As part of my work, like I'm sitting there watching yeah. the Pride stuff. So with Sakuraba, uh, Rampage was. In Pride back then, there was this guy before Fedor. There's a guy named Igor Volchanchin, who was this like Russian like, <laughs> and so so I was watching that, and that kind of got me into it. And then I transitioned to UFC once UFC kind of became more popular with like Tito Ortiz yeah. and Chuck Liddell, Randy Couture, and stuff. So yeah, um, so yeah, th- this show we're going to talk about all the news. We're not going to be breaking down like every single fight and techniques and all that stuff. What we're going to talk about is the stories. In terms of news, like what's going on and the different angles of stuff. So let's start off. Yeah. Obviously, the big thing. <laughs> this is 
probably going to be the biggest fight in MMA history, which is Conor McGregor versus Khabib Nurmagomedov. Yeah. Um, which is UFC 229 on October 6th for the lightweight championship. Uh, you know, it used to be Conor's belt. He got stripped of it. Khabib won it uh, in the past few months. A lot of stuff going on. The whole Conor has started uh, posting insults to Khabib and his dad on Instagram. Uh, another story that's come out is Khabib's coach says, look, they know that Khabib is not going to strike with Connor. No. They, they, so they're not even bother training him in that department. They, yeah. they know what they're going to do to get him a, a, a victory. Um, so another story is Connor is doing less media. Yeah. Uh, to prepare. And apparently there's been a report that, that the UFC is frustrated with really? Connor. Yeah. Oh. Well, you know, Connor is. He's one of the biggest sports stars, right. not just in MMA, but just sports stars, period. Right. And if you don't have, like, the guy who's who's best known for saying outlandish things and, and, and going and not promoting this fight, really, yeah. I'm sure he'll promote it once maybe the week or two comes. But right now, he's kind of laying low. I mean, he's taking his little jabs on, on social media, yeah. but really, he's, he's, he's training. So my question to you guys is, one, can Connor mentally uh, get to Khabib like he did Aldo? Uh, what do you think, Roga? I think no one else is better at it. And okay. so I wouldn't be surprised that he did. I mean, his, I wouldn't be surprised if this has been a long game he's been playing for quite some time to throw that uh, fence or the, or the steel fence or whatever it was he threw at the bus and get them all intimidated if he was just trying to line something up for himself. And sometimes Connor, Connor is one of those guys that will do s stuff to psych himself up into a fight. And so, like, I, throwing the fence thing uh, or the guardrail, whatever it was, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that was his way of, like, talking himself into this fight with Khabib and wanting to go at him. I mean, insulting his dad the way he did, like, that means nothing is off base. He's going to find, like, ex-girlfriends of Khabib's or something to come out and do statements or whatever. Like, nothing is off base with him. So he knows, like a good striker, he knows exactly when to hit and how to hit, how hard and how to unsettle you and keep you unbalanced. And so I wouldn't be surprised surprised that he's already got like a whole a bunch of stuff lined up and this may be all part of his plan to do less media so that when he comes out it's more like a punch in the mouth a real hard punch in the mouth rather than a bunch of small things over and over again to, to like kind of chinese water torture you mm -hmm. this is more of a of, of a hit and then run a hit and run and and so i wouldn't be surprised if this whole thing is his plan but you know the coach uh for khabib he also he said it's going to be hard to to keep uh, to keep uh, Khabib up top and and not have him go to the grappling stuff. He knows that he can strike, but he, the temptation will be there, right? Because he was talking about the Ayakinta match and how he had a hard time like convincing Khabib to keep doing the mm -hmm. things that are working because he wanted to throw. And that's the pride thing that comes into play with this whole situation. So if Connor can unsettle him to the point where Khabib is like going after going the pride route, and I don't mean the 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 I don't mm -hmm. mean pride Invicta, yeah. I mean the actual pride. I think it'll be a dangerous thing for him. Jay, do you th do you think uh, Connor can can rile up Khabib like he did Aldo? Because we saw Aldo, Aldo was obviously kind of he was he was cooked. Like by the time he came into yeah, the ring, he, he had so much tension and mm. nervousness and h anger and everything. He kind of yeah. tried to let it out right in the beginning. And he got he got clipped, and he's trying to do the same thing to Khabib. But Khabib's a different type of you know. Person, yeah. different animal. He's pretty. He's pretty cold. Uh, do you think he's going to get to him? Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, Conor McGregor is uh, is just in a different level when it comes to these sort of mind games. I mean, the fight between himself and Khabib started before the contract was even signed. Yeah, before he even threw a dolly through this bus window. This has been going on for a very, very long time. In fact, anybody that crosses paths with Conor McGregor, this happens. Um, you know, the, the whole stuff with with him not doing the media stuff and the, and the press requirements, that that stuff goes all the way back to even before uh, the Mayweather fight. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had these big problems with with all the travel that was taking place and not being compensated for some of this stuff. And it, and it makes sense. I'm actually personally a big fan of this because I think that it's good for someone the size of Conor McGregor to sort of challenge the UFC. I think fighter compensation and pay is something that's mm. a huge issue in the sport, especially with UFC as dominant as they are. But to go back to your question, yeah, this whole mind game thing, I, I don't know if, how it's going to affect Khabib. And I don't know if we're going to dive deep into talking about any more of this fight, but to sort of 
give you guys my personal thoughts on the fight. I think Connor needs as much as he can possibly get because I think this is without a doubt his toughest fight he's ever mm. come up against. A lot of his fights in the past have been favorable matchups. That's not taking anything away from Connor McGregor. Even the stuff uh, from Khabib's camp and uh, all the stuff talking about his stand up. Listen, if you think Khabib Nur- Nurmagomedov is not practicing stand up at all, <laughs> you're you're a fool. He's obviously practicing stand up. It's a mismatch, right? Conor McGregor's main, his main thing is his stand-up. He has a killer punch, killer punching power. The size of Khabib, I don't necessarily know how his chin will do against that. But yeah, of course, if he wants to win this fight, he's going to be focusing on his wrestling. That's Not only is that the thing that he's the best at, he is probably the best at that period. So it, it's I think he's trying to do some mind games um, on his own. And I'm sort of interested to see how all this plays out over the next couple months. Yeah, what's fascinating, too, is when you think about how better he was in defense uh, with Diaz, like in the third match or the second match. You saw them going like he Connor had improved his ability to avoid the takedowns, to avoid being caught in a grappling situation on the ground. So and even when he was, he was able to find his way out of it. And so that tells you he's 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 learned, you know, and and, uh, where he's at now. I wonder if he's going to be able to do that, and because the first time Khabib tries to take him down, or, or the first few times, and Connor counters it and doesn't, t- then what does Khabib have? Because if he can defeat, if he can hold Khabib off on the ground, then it's back up to the strike, it's back up to the stand up. Right. What does he do at that point? What does Khabib do at that point? Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, but, uh, all. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I was going to say the the thing about Khabib though that makes him special is that he just keeps going and going and going. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if he doesn't get the first takedown or the second or third. He's just going to keep trying and trying. Now, if he gets clipped on the way coming there in, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he then he becomes you know more gun shy yeah. in terms of, of of that takedown. That's a different story. I mean, I rewatched the the Michael Johnson uh, Khabib fight, and it actually wasn't. In my mind, I remembered it more like, oh, man, Johnson clipped him and this and that. And then eventually Khabib, he actually hit him like maybe twice yeah. flush. And Khabib, yeah, he, I don't think he got rocked, but he, he definitely got a little stunned. But still, like he just kept going and going. So it wasn't as, you know, I didn't. I, I remember Michael Johnson doing much better than he actually did. Mm. Me watching, I'm like, no, he got dominated. He got taken out. And, right. and if Khabib can do that to Connor, that's that's kind of the way that people are, are, are imagining. Yeah, I mean, I, listen, I say the same thing for every single fight that I've ever thought <laughs> about or, or wondered how it's going to play out. Every single round start, starts on the feet, right? Yeah, and right. We, we saw... We saw what happened with those mind games with Aldo. I mean, he completely threw caution to the wind, and he paid the price for it, uh, knocked out in, in seconds. And I don't, I don't know enough about Khabib's demeanor in this regard, in the sense where Connor is just a different animal when it comes to stuff like that. But you guys are exactly right. I mean, Khabib is going to try to impose his will on Conor McGregor, and I actually agree with Roca in the sense where Khabib, he's been, you know, he's been challenged on the ground for sure. He, you know, he's fought some people who, who pose that type of threat and he's actually been relatively good. I don't, I'm not going to say he's like a mastermind, uh, jujitsu practitioner, <laughs> but he definitely knows how to at least stalemate on the ground. Uh, and I, you know, I don't know. I think if this, fight goes past the second round it's going to be one of the most boring disappointing fights that we've ever seen wow, just really? because connor okay. connor mcgregor does not he his stamina yeah. has always been i Absolutely. think the the thing that's really really bothered him i mean that's the thing that really lost him the ds fight that and not being able to to rock diaz in that fight mm-hmm. um so that's something that i'm a little bit worried about but uh, i mean I personally think that the fight is a great cherry on top, but the real entertainment is going to come with each of these pre- press conferences coming up. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I, they're not going to come face to face until I think the week of. Yeah. Uh, right. Because Probably smart. Of, yeah. It, the thing, too, is I've been noticing kind of a narrative going on lately. I don't know if you guys have been seeing it. Because initially, when, when uh, the fight was announced, or even before when the fight was announced, people had Khabib as the favorite, and everyone. 
you know, thinks like, okay, he's going to take him down and then he's going to either ground and pound him to either a TKO or, or just kind of a lopsided decision victory. Yeah. Uh, I've been noticing a lot in the media of like a lot of like uh, MMA stars or someone like, you know, Brendan Schaub and like some other people saying that they think Connor is going to KO Khabib. Yeah. Now. Uh, I do. Okay. So you do. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, absolutely. I'm not saying it's not possible. Look, <laughs> it I, sounds like you're saying it's not no, possible. No, no, no. Look, I'm a Connor fan. Okay, yeah. uh, so, I, I like Connor, same. but you know, if I'm, I'm taking money, I'm going to put money uh-huh. on on Khabib winning. Okay, just because I feel like two things is one the 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 relentlessness of Khabib. People, you know, there's stories of him like at AKA wrestling with people like Luke Rockhold, who's you know oh, yeah. way heavier than him. And him doing pretty well, like not winning, but like doing pretty well. Mm-hmm. People say he's very, very strong as a lightweight. That he's able to to you know wrestle with with someone of you know a much higher weight class. So yeah. plus the stamina thing, like Connor, he he tends to lose steam around the end of the second round and third round, and I don't know. The the one one wild card for me though is we've actually only see Connor. At this weight class, yep. once. And he looked yep. great yep. versus Eddie Alvarez. Yep. And he KO'd him. He knocked him down, what, like three times? That's the only thing. Maybe the welterweight thing, maybe that was just too, made, too much weight for him to carry. Yeah. And that tired him out. I don't know. That's kind of my only kind of wild card thing. But it's not like I'm saying Connor can't KO Khabib. I just, I'm not sure if that can happen. What if, what if he hits him with a, with a shot or two? And Khabib just keeps moving forward and it doesn't do anything. Well, that that's a scary proposition. Of course, but like you said, Connor isn't a guy that sits back. He's going to keep going, yeah. just like Khabib. So it's right. going to be a, a an intelligent fight, and it's going to be a, a fight that's. I think it's going to be something we have never seen before. In, the, in I think both of these men are going to bring new wrinkles to their styles that are going to make it an even more interesting fight that the other guy is going to have to figure out yeah. the new wrinkles, like how to counter the new wrinkles. And that's going to be interesting. And I think, I do think, uh, because people always doubt con like every yes. single fight. Oh, I know, this is the one, yeah, yeah. this is the one, you know, <laughs> and the Diaz one was just, to me, that's still a fluke of endurance and stamina. He was destroying Diaz. Yes, he was. Dish- the man was a bloody pulp. And then he turned it around and, and got the victory and, and sub, uh, Submitted him so, but it was shot. But it was only because he ran out of stamina. If he had kept his stamina, he'd have kept peppering Diaz till he submitted, and then D- he fought back. The same thing was going to happen in that second match. He figured it out. He adjusted, and with his stamina, he stayed in there, took the best Diaz has, and then eventually beat him. And that, to me, overall shows you that this is a guy that does not quit. No matter what, he will not quit. And he's lost before, obviously, but. He, I just don't. I think he's not a guy that that quits. Yeah. Well, in the rematch, though, and he's smart. He, he he was smarter about using stamina because he knocked down Diaz like three times, yes. and he didn't like fully go after him and use all his energy. Right. But in the first one, he was hitting Diaz with some great shots, and he wasn't, you know, didn't seem to rock Diaz. Right. 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 And that's where he lost all his stamina. Was yeah. he just kept yeah, going and yeah. going? He was throwing yeah. everything in, and he's like, "Why isn't this guy going down?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I, it's just one of those things where it's. I think the first like what three minutes of this fight are going to be very telling. Yeah. Yeah. Jay, do you think it's? Yeah. Do you have Khabib or do you have uh, uh, Khan? Well, you know, I'm I'm the type of guy that I'll I'll totally. We need to see more of of the training camps and this and that and sort of. Uh, feel both fighters out but okay. i'm a big fan of you know making a prediction now and seeing where we are you can't you don't have to lock in your fight prediction until like right before the fight <laughs> yeah. so right right now we have a, we have a few more we have a few more episodes of, exactly. of the podcast exactly. before we, we, we can flip-flop around I, I feel right now i'm feeling i'm feeling khabib for for a bunch of, of reasons the the current odds are actually pretty close i mean it, it's Good. not Khabib, Khabib is a favorite, uh, minus 170, mm-hmm. uh, with McGregor at plus 140 on one particular website I'm looking at. So, you know, I mean, you're not going to make a bunch of money off of this fight, but if you're looking to maybe parlay a fight or something like that and yeah. take an underdog, it's not a it's not a bad pick for for McGregor. I, I'm glad Dennis that you brought up the the weight thing because even the fight against Eddie Alvarez, even though Connor fought at lighter weight classes primarily throughout his you know, most of his career, 
Eddie Alvarez was still a little bit of a smaller fighter, even mm. though he was champion at a higher weight class. I do personally feel that Khabib, at least to me, seems like a little bit more uh, filled out lightweight. I don't know what he walks around at typically. So if anything, it could be a more even fight than, than yeah. what we're maybe leading on to believe. But Man, I'm excited for it. Um, it sounds to me like both of you guys. No, Dennis said. I uh, said Khabib. Khabib, even though I am a Connor fan and I, I'm Same. kind of rooting for him to win. This is, like yep. I said, we're not MMA journalists, so we're not going to be like, yeah. oh, I'm unbiased. I don't care. Right. No, I, I do. I have. I'm a fan of certain fighters. I'm a fan of Connor. I like the way he fights. I, I find him to be an interesting person. Does he, he doesn't always do the right thing. I no. mean, he, they, but. Uh, in terms of, of for MMA, I, I, I think it's exciting. I want him to win. I just the re also rewatching that Michael Johnson fight and, and realizing like, man, he yeah, it wasn't as it's I guess he didn't get as rocked or as, as I thought he he did. So mm. uh, right now I, I'm I'm thinking Khabib. Um, I wonder if Connor for the mental games if Connor submits him on the ground. Oh, that Jesus. Yeah. Can crazy. you imagine? Can you, I mean, because if he does that, then because I mean, that's the thing that frustrates me. So many people do not. It's ma it's mind blowing to me that people still question Conor. Like the fact that Khabib is such an overwhelming favorite initially blows my mind. It's like it's like he hasn't done anything. Like Conor just showed up yesterday. It's so frustrating. Yes, I'm glad this guy hasn't lost a round. I'm glad this guy you know has hasn't lost a fight in a while. But. You know, uh, he's also had multiple, he's had injuries or the people he's fought, like Ferguson have had multiple injuries. So like he hasn't really been supremely tested multiple times over the last few years. So to me, it's mind blowing that people think, oh yeah, could be no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I'm not it's saying no doubt. Me. I'm not saying no doubt. I'm just, I'm picking him because I think he is the better odds to win. But yeah, but yeah, he could get raw if he. You know, it's it's gonna be really telling when he gets hit first, yeah, uh, flush, yep. yeah, and like how does he respond to that? Because if right. he if he's stunned and a little rocked, then that might it's be over. yeah, like, yeah. and then especially if he can't get Connor to the ground, yeah, and then th what is he gonna do? That's that's it. Yeah. That, that, that's. The, uh, that's it. All right, uh, we're going to be talking much more about Connor and Khabib <laughs> on, on plenty more episodes. Let's, and you know, that's in October sixth next month. Let's talk about the the UFC card that's coming up this weekend: Tyrone Woodley versus Darren Till for the welterweight championship. Here's the backstory behind this one: We have you know Darren Till kind of skipping the line in a way because yeah. Colby Covington was supposed to fight Tyron Woodley because he had the interim title fight, but Colby Covington couldn't. Uh, I guess he said he 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 couldn't make the, the this date, and so. Darren Till steps in, even though he missed weight against Stephen John uh, Thompson, even though he he beat him, but he 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 missed weight. Um, Kamar Usman, who is uh, also a, a contender in the welterweight uh, division, is being paid by the UFC yeah. to train to fight if either one of them fall out. Really, he's he's there because they're worried Darren Till's not going to make weight. Right. But Woodley has said, uh, I think he said it on a. Uh, Errol Hawani's a, a new show on ESPN. He said he's not fighting him. Yeah, he's not going to fight him. It doesn't matter. Like it's not that he's scared of him because he said he'll fight him at a later date. But he's not going to fight him on basically a week. Or it would be a day's notice or day because the wait is the on the day before. So yeah. he just says he's not going to do that. So my question is, uh, Jay, you can start off. Is this fight actually going to happen? Tyrone Woodley <laughs> versus Darren Till. Is this going to happen Saturday night? Or is Darren Till going to miss weight? Tyrone Woodley's not going to fight. And then they either cancel the fight or maybe Kormar Usman fights Darren Till instead just for to have something on the card. What, what do you think? <laughs> I mean, listen, when, when you lay it out on, on paper like that, it sounds like one of the most volatile brittle, fragile fights that could ever possibly happen. <laughs> listen, I, I don't know what deity people listening pray to, but we just need to pray to whoever that individual is that this fight takes place because I think this is one of the most exciting fights uh, that the UFC's booked in quite a while, just matchup-wise. I mean, listen, I understand from a business perspective why they sort of fast-tracked Darren Till to get there. They're hungry for star power. He's an exciting fighter. I mean, he's all action. He's big. He, he's just exciting. And, I mean, he can back it up. His fights, I mean, he's so, so precise with his punches. 
And uh, I get every single reason why they're putting him in this fight. With that being said, the stuff with Tyron Woodley and him not wanting to fight this uh, this guy, this uh, this guy that's on the uh, sort of you know in the in the waiting wings. I get it. I get why you wouldn't want to do something like that. I think Tyron Woodley has has a career, has the experience, has the status. He's a champion, for God's sakes, that he doesn't necessarily have to take this fight. We all know that a, a MMA fighter's career, you know, it's a ticking clock, and you kind of got to pick and choose who you're going to fight. And and you know, Tyron Woodley doesn't have the best relationship with uh, with Dana White right no. now. Currently, mm-hmm. he's been very critical Dana White's been very critical of him especially uh, with his last two fights and how sort of timid he's been um, so I hope this fight goes off with without a hitch because I'm really really excited for it but will it I think that is a definite uh, warranted question to ask yeah because I mean if you have you seen the pictures of Darren Till next to Tyron Winley? He <laughs> he's, looks he's huge yeah he looks like he's in another weight class and he you know, he missed weight against Stephen Thompson, and and Stephen Thompson spoke out. He said, he goes, well, of course people keep missing weight because there's no consequences. Yep. Look what happened with yeah. with him and Darren Till. Darren Till misses weight, he wins the fight, and then he gets a title shot, yeah. and, and Stephen Thompson doesn't get anything. Um, so it's, it's one of those things where it's like, man, like, is this fight really going to happen? Yeah. And well, well, here's the thing. I, I also get what Lee's... Uh, because because there's more there's more money involved there's more stakes yeah. here now, like if this is the beginning of MMA or UFC, maybe you take the fight because it's fun. We've seen uh, numerous people step in and take fights at the last minute mm-hmm. and even win championships at the last minute and so in the history of UFC and MMA. So it's not like it's not possible for Usman to walk in this thing and beat Woodley. No. But Woodley, so Woodley's like, no, I've been training for this other guy. Yeah. Oh, my whole camp is about this other guy. I'm not going to now focus on this other dude or also do a double training yeah. camp and adjust to do that. Just Why are you making your champion work harder? That doesn't make any sense to me. He's the champion. You may not like the way he's fought his fights recently, but he's still the champion. So he gets to dictate his terms. Hey, in the schmodown, I get to pick some wheel slices if I'm the champion. That's how it right. works. I get to say if it's spinner's choice or opponent's choice because the champion gets that part because they've earned it. Mm-hmm. So this whole idea that you have to prove yourself even more than the challengers is damn ridiculous to me, in my opinion. And so uh, I appreciate Darren Till's responses. He's a very angry guy. The, uh, the interview on MMA fighting, he is cussing out the whole, uh, every sentence. He's cussing out because he's angry that he's being he's being uh, singled out as the only person in his mind to have ever missed not weight. missed weight. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. So maybe he'll use that anger and absolutely demolish Woodley and then slam four hamburgers down in the dressing room afterwards. But you can't you can't discount a guy's motivation. And it sounds to me like he's super motivated to walk into that ring and destroy Woodley once and for all and be done with it <clears throat> and be done with all this weight talk. And who knows? Maybe it destroys him uh, uh, quickly. Usman will step in and he'll kill him too. So those all those, all those things are interesting to me. But I, I I just wonder about this whole idea of lining someone up as a backup. This is a very strange thing to me, in my opinion, because I'm like, look, this is the sport you've chosen to be in. This is the way you've set things up. Guys are getting injured more because they train harder. They train more than ever before. The cutting of the weight is important. Everything is important. So they all they have all their issues and situations going on. So that's the price you pay. Oh, that's the chance you take rather when you're the owner of of a of a federation like this some guys are going to like when when uh, it's different than WWE if WWE someone gets hurt you just adjust the storyline this is you know you've got to uh, just deal with the hits and go forward and i know they haven't made a lot of money over the last few fights recently or last few pay-per-views recently uh but this is the this is the choice you've made so having a guy lined up to go at a moment's notice that your champ refuses to fight why are you even lining him up if the champ already said he's not going to fight him what are you going to make him fight him i don't know how that works can you contractually like i'm sure he didn't sign a contract that said and if you find someone else to back up darren till i'll no, fight him too no they always renegotiate whenever fights drop out at the last moment, they renegotiate, and then they dangle more money. They go like, "Well, we need this to happen." So I'd say no belt. I'll fight you, no belt. Let's do it. That would be fine with me. Well, I mean, that's the thing is he could fight Darren Till for no belt. You know, the belt's not yeah, on the line. If he, he, no, no, I mean the, Usman. If he, he's going to fight Usman, the belt's not on the line. Well, see, at that point, you might as well just fight Darren Till. That's you know? what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, that some and they, sort and they of could do that. that. They could totally do that in this fight. And I yeah. listen, here's a question I have for you guys. I'm, I'm looking at this card and I sort of thought this before, you know, before even dissecting it even further. I, I'm 
personally not crazy about the card. I mean, I, on paper, we obviously the the main event is a is a great match. We've got two titles on the line. We've got a flyweight women's flyweight title as well. Yeah. But some of the rest of the card, it just it's not quite as exciting. I mean, it, yeah, that could mean a lot of pay per view buy, buys if all of a sudden that main event is changed and. I don't know. It seems like one of those fights because because of you know all the stuff that's gone on around it. I, I just feel like they've put all their eggs in this basket. Yeah, I could easily see if Darren Till were to miss weight that they just let the fight go on. Listen, championship belts they don't even mean anything anymore <laughs> in the UFC. Pretty much. I mean, they're just like oh, you get a belt, you get yeah. a belt, you get a belt. Yeah. It's like Oprah giving away cars. It's just it's just not even a that big of a deal. So uh, as long as I get to see him fight, that's kind of all I care about. Yeah, I mean, you looked at the last, the rematch between Yoel Romero and Robert Whitaker. Romero missed weight, and yeah. then so they fought, they fought, but the belt couldn't be lost. If yeah. Whitaker lost the fight, which he almost did because he got rocked, yeah. um, <laughs> he, let's say Romero wins that fight, then, but he's not the champion right. because he missed weight. <laughs> So, I don't know. It's, it's just one of those things where, I don't know, this weight cutting thing, me me and actually uh, my best friend who who uh, he, he loves UFC as well, mm-hmm. and well, MMA, and um, we always talk about the weight cutting thing and just like how, how big of a problem it is. Yeah. It just seems like yep. everyone's cutting weight and then everyone's cutting weight so they can go in a lower class. But the problem is if you're cutting weight and that person's cutting weight, you're probably the same weight if you didn't cut weight. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, so it's, it, it becomes like um, this kind of battle of who can cut the most weight, you know, right. versus who's who's going to fight the best. Right, right. It, it's a whole other thing to factor into these matchups, right? How much of that is going to affect. And cutting yeah. the weight is still, it's all specific to each person. You can cut so much weight that you don't have the energy when you get or you're lethargic or you put mm-hmm. the weight on too fast. Then you walk in that ring and you're not moving as quickly as you thought. You're a step slow. You're half a step slow. Hell, all you need to be is a quarter step slow and you get knocked out in the MMA or in the UFC rather. So that that kind of thing is – I get why it's important. But I don't – I'm with you, Dennis. I don't understand with all these heightened technology and all this new stuff of what you can eat and what you can't eat, what to work out, and all, all these new trainers that are in the UFC now – how are people still missing weight? It's mind blowing to me. Like, who is not around these people going, "This is millions of dollars yeah. or hundreds of thousands." Well, I mean, but that's the way for a four dollar Big Mac. What yeah. is wrong with you? Well, and Stephen Thompson said though, it's like no consequences. So people, yeah, people just yeah, why not? So there's the consequence. You don't get a shot at the title for five years. Yeah. You don't get a, like there's have to be something here where like you you pay the price for the situation that that, that you put yourself in. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We- We've got this new uh, precedent also being set too by uh, Rich Franklin and his his sort of promotion One FC, uh, where they're basically doing away with weight cutting in general, and they took everybody and just moved them up to their natural weight class. <laughs> That's smart. Um, and obviously, it's a it's a trial, it's a it's a test, it's something they're they're looking at doing. I'm I'm interested to see where this goes. Um, but then again, there's nothing saying that the UFC has to adhere to it if it does work, but there's a lot of people out there in the media who are very, very critical of it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't know if, you know, it's going to do any good, but I mean, I think people just need to be monitored, you know, like not like just their own trainers, but like a UFC monitor (laughs) that goes out there and checks their weight. So they're not, you know, cause I, I also had heard one of the reasons why, the Connor Khabib thing came together so quickly is I heard that Connor wanted Khabib to cut more weight over less amount of time because <laughs> so so that like you know smart yeah, yeah. so you know because Khabib is a is is a big guy and yeah. so maybe that plays into into their fight who knows yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, let's move on. Uh, two big fights uh, were announced the past couple of weeks. Uh, we mentioned them on Collider Sports Time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cyborg versus uh, Amanda Nunes. This is a super fight between the featherweight champion Cyborg <laughs> and bantamweight Amanda Nunes. These are the closest odds that Cyborg has had. I don't know if it ever, but at least in a long time. Yeah. Um, what is the realistic chance of Amanda Nunes beating Cyborg? Well. <sighs> Uh, zero. Zero. Like, I just, I really. <laughs> zero. I know. Uh, cyborg is, like, uh, until I see a, a crack in okay. that armor, I okay. can't. Like, every time Ronda, before Ronda walked in that ring, I thought, no, no one can beat her. Like, yeah, no yeah. one can beat her. Cyborg, even more so. 
Um, for a number of reasons, some I can't politically say, but mm-hmm. for a number of reasons that you, we've heard on the outside, mm-hmm. you know, and whispers and whatever, and also my eyes mm-hmm. tell me mm-hmm. these kinds of things. This is a beast of a woman. Mm-hmm. And so it does not look, it looks like she can pull uh, her arms off of, uh, of what's her face uh, right, and eat them right in front of you. So she is a vicious, vicious fighter. And I, as much as I enjoy uh, uh, seeing Nunes fight, I, I don't. And as strong and as tough as I think Amanda Nunes is, I think Cyborg is just too much to deal with in the long run, and that eventually she'll just get pummeled into to giving up and into oblivion. They'll, they'll call it. I'm okay, just, that's I, what I feel like. I'm giving it more of a chance than that. I, I'm not. <laughs> I still think Cyborg's going to win, but I'm not giving it a zero percent chance. Amanda Nunes is definitely a, a very strong striker. I know Misha Tate had, had mentioned that yeah. after her loss to her when she lost the championship, she's like, she's like. She hits harder than some of the guys that she sparred with at her camp. She Misha was like, said that. Uh, yeah, Misha Tate said okay. that. Yeah, about Manny Nunes when she lost it. She said, like, yeah, it. she hits hard. That's why, like, with Ronda, once Ronda got a taste of it, like, she... You oh, know, yeah, Ronda was done. Yeah, it yeah. was, you know, because, you know, Ronda's taken punches before, but from lesser str- strikers, right. right? And she just walked through it. And But and, I also think that's why Ronda ran from Cyborg. Because Ronda knew Cyborg was going to go through her like minced meat. So I, I think that's a situation there, too. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, uh, so, but actually, Cyborg, the thing that impressed me the most was her last fight with Holly Holm, yeah. where she actually used technique yes. against her versus kind of just brutal strength. We're, we're used to seeing her kind of just like clobber her opponents. Right. With Holly, she had to actually, you know, use a lot of, you know, different uh, angles and sidestepping and like she had to avoid Holly's uh, striking and so I saw it a much more technique focused cyborg so that's kind of where I'm thinking where she might have the edge over uh, uh, Amanda. Jay? Yeah, I mean listen I I, I don't know what roca has been smoking <laughs> over there but uh, I've been smoking the same thing I don't think <laughs> I, I don't think Nunez has any chance here. Um, zero, I so think, you have zero yeah. chance. Yeah. yeah, I mean listen, I I I'm not a huge fan of pound for pound rankings because mm-hmm. it's kind of this weird fantastical thing, but I think somebody could make a crazy, 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 uh, you know, push for Cyborg to be one of the pound for pound best fighters in the world because of her dominance over, uh, you know, the all, everybody she's ever fought. Now the Holly Holm match was a fantastic fight because. Mm-hmm. It was a fight. It actually seemed like a fight. And, and I, I, I could see this Amanda Nunes thing going the same way in terms of it actually being a fight. But if we're talking about can she beat Cyborg, I mean, how, how is that going to be? Is it going to be takedown and submission? I don't know if she has the strength to you know, overtake her in that yeah. regard. Yeah. Is she going to knock her out? I think... Chris Cyborg actually has a pretty solid chin, so it's just like I don't necessarily I don't necessarily see uh, where she has any particular advantage. Again, like we've been saying throughout this entire episode, anything can happen. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm never really surprised or shocked by anything anymore. But I definitely I don't know what the line is. I don't have it pulled up right now. I'm assuming Chris Cyborg is a huge huge favorite. And I think that it's very, very warm. I mean, she's a big favorite, but like I said, it was, it's the closest odds she's ever had. So I it's agree. not as, as big as, it, as uh, you know, you, I think some people would think. All right, let's move on to another match that, that, that is actually the co-main event yeah. and undercard for the Conor Khabib. Because that card actually, other than that, that title fight, it wasn't looking that interesting. But now you have Tony Ferguson versus Anthony Pettis. So you have the ex-interim champion who actually didn't lose the belt right. <laughs> versus an ex-lightweight champion, Anthony Pettis, who, who, who flirted with going down in weight and then came back up to lightweight. Um, you know, people are talking like if anything happens with Khabib or Connor that, that let's say Ferguson would step in. Yeah. Like, let's say uh, Connor gets hurt or something. Ferguson would step in, which is funny because that's the one when you're talking about praying to like the MMA gods. The last time that, that uh, Khabib, when he won the title, when he was supposed to fight Ferguson, I was praying to the MMA gods that this fight would happen. Yeah. And then Tony Ferguson steps on a cable at a TV show stage yeah. <laughs> and then like, uh, Tore, tears his ACL, and then that's like what the third or fourth time the fight has been, you know, yeah. set up. So, 
who knows? Maybe this is the only way this fight could happen is, is if for some reason I don't want this to happen because I do want to see Connor fight Khabib. But let's say Connor hurts himself or whatever. Ferguson steps in, he fights Khabib. Um, they should carry him in. Yeah, yeah. In a hyperbaric <laughs> chamber. Just carry him in in a chamber, then open it up and let him out into the ring. But, uh, <laughs> Rogo, what do you think about this fight? I love this fight. Yeah. I think it's a good fight. Uh, you know, I know Pettis is ranked number 10, but uh, Pettis has had some really great fights. Yeah. I know Fergus is on a 10-match winning streak, but yeah, he's coming off that injury. He's got this stuff going on. So, to me, there's there's a lot more here that makes it a little closer. Yeah. There are a lot more outside factors that make it a little bit closer than you would think. Uh, and, and, and you know, to, uh, Pettis has just submitted Chiesa in, in yeah. the second round in July. So, and but and yeah, he's alternated wins. I know he has and, yeah. and losses. That's that's the way it goes. He's not he's not the you know highest quality fighter. But like Jay said earlier, any any given day, you never know how the styles will mix, how the styles will work there. And Pettis may be a little bit hungrier than Ferguson in that situation, right. and may pull the surprise out here. Yeah, obviously Ferguson is a favorite one, logical. But I think Pettis certainly has all the skills to, to take out Ferguson if he wants. Yeah, yeah, it's a. Uh, I mean, Pettis at the time, you know, when he was champion, he yeah. was he was unstoppable. He, yeah. was, he, yep. he hadn't lost in so long, and then he hit RDA, and then kind of uh, yeah. kind of derailed. I mean, that's the thing is like. Yeah, confidence, man. confidence is a is a huge. The mental mm-hmm. thing is huge in yeah. in the fight game. Once you hit that one opponent that knows exactly how to beat you, and you keep trying and you can't. Yeah, like we're seeing now with uh, uh, Rose. Like Rose took care of of what's her face Joanna, twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joanna Jersey. Like she can't she can't overcome Rose, and that's it. And then no, I don't know how she's going to bounce back overall to try to be champion. So it, we see that all the time. I, yeah. d- I thought Diaz was going to have that over Connor in that second fight because mm-hmm. when Diaz started turning around, I'm like oh, Connor's like, oh my god, Connor cannot beat this guy, mm-hmm. and then I don't, and then Connor turned it around. So it, there's always that one person that messes you up mentally. Yeah, let's say Pettis wins. Uh, <laughs> I mean, look, if Ferguson wins, you know he's going to get the next. Oh, sorry. he's going to get the next shot at yeah. the belt, right? Um, let's say Pettis wins. Does he get the next shot? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. With Nate Diaz and, and Dustin Poirier playing, uh, fighting soon, yeah. wouldn't uh, that would be? I would. Th- those guys are higher ranked, and they would I, deserve I, it. No, more, I think, think I think if Connor beats Khabib, then you definitely oh want Diaz. If yes. Diaz beats Poirier, yeah. yes, then you, you want, want the trilogy. Yeah. You want the trilogy. Yeah. But let's say either Connor loses to Khabib or or Diaz loses to Poirier, and then that matchup isn't available. Right. The lightweight championship, maybe Pettis sneaks in there. Yeah. Yeah, the this this whole fight, man, it's it's exciting, but it's also a little bit confusing to me because <laughs> of all the Tony Ferguson stuff that's gone on. The weird, like, I don't know if somebody's got like a voodoo doll and they're just like pushing him <laughs> off cliffs or something yeah, like that. It's been a year since he fought. It's been it's been it's been crazy, and especially because he's probably the in the best sort of form he's ever been mm-hmm. in, like throughout his entire career, which, you know, that of course he is, he's, he's just one of the best. You can see his rankings, but Anthony Pettis, you, you hit on it, Roka, his, his consistency is a little bit weird. Like you never really know what type of Anthony Pettis you're going to get. Yeah. But I think that's what makes the fight so interesting. This is, this is one where I don't know why <laughs> something is just telling me that, it could be Anthony Pettis's time to sort of regain some of that that spark and and fire and energy that he had um, every now and then, I guess. But listen, if there's anybody on the fence uh, about this card, I mean, if you didn't hear us, this is the same card that has Khabib and Connor, yeah. uh, UFC 229. This card is absolutely stacked. If you're a casual fan, like. Uh, I would say go ahead and just hit the purchase button. This thing is stacked from top to bottom. Uh, you know, sometimes you don't watch every fight, and it, almost every single fight, with the exception of a handful, they've just got fireworks on them. So I'm yeah. really, really excited for this card. Yeah, I already purchased it. Uh, we'll be watching it here at the Collider office and soon, and then and us three will be hopping on this podcast right. yeah. to do a special kind of recap of of the entire event uh, UFC uh, 229 all right uh just a reminder to tell everyone to who's watching on YouTube uh you can actually subscribe to our collider sports podcast yeah. which you know is going to have this show every week it's going to have collider sports time roca does a uh, soccer European yeah. football Premier League uh, recap, yeah. recaps. We're going to have a lot of different stuff showing up on that channel. Make sure to subscribe to that because right now we're, we're, po- we're going to post this on the, the Collider Sports Podcast and the Factory one, but eventually we're going to take all the sports off 
off of Factory and just leave it on Collider Sports. So if you want to subscribe to that right now, you can. All right, let's move on. You know, obviously, we're going to be talking a lot of UFC for, for the most part. UFC is the big dog, right? It is. But we will talk about Bellator. We're not going to talk about every little fight. I mean, even on the UFC stuff, we're not talking about every little fight. Mm-hmm. We're just talking about the big stuff. So let's talk about what's going on in Bellator we have 205 coming up in September 21st, which is AJ McKee versus John McCappa. That's going to be on uh, live on the Paramount Network. We also, the big one, the one I'm most interested in is Bellator 206, which is Gegard Mousasi versus Rory McDonald, two ex-UFC guys. Yeah. That's for the middleweight title. Uh, Rory is the welterweight champion. He's stepping up to fight Gegard. Also on that card is Rampage versus Vanderlei at heavyweight, which is weird. Um, th- this is on September 29th. This is not going to be on uh, the Paramount Network, and it's not going to be uh, a pay-per-view either. It's going to be streaming on that new uh, kind of sports streaming network. Kind of, It's kind of like a Hulu, Netflix type of thing called... It's called Days In or DAZN. I don't know exactly. It's D A Z N. I don't know. I, don't, I don't even know. know how to say it. Off to a bad start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not a good business move. Come on, guys. Yeah. So I'm going to, you know, I'm interested in that fight. So I'll probably, if they have a trial, I'll, I'll get the trial to, to watch that fight. Or yeah. maybe it's just for a month. Maybe I'll pay to watch this fight uh, or pay for a month and wa- watch this fight. Um, uh, the welterweight tournament starts uh, also. Uh, on that card with Douglas Lima versus Andre Kereshkov. Uh The heavyweight tournament, uh, Bellator 207. Finally, <laughs> finally, this, this heavyweight tournament has been going on forever. Finally, you have Matt Mitrione versus Ryan Bader, which is weird because that's on October 12th. The next day is Bellator 208. October, you know, we've seen like UFC have like a fight night or, yeah. or whatever, let's say on a Friday night and they'll have like uh, UFC pay per view on Saturday. They've never had like UFC like whatever one eighty yeah. and then one eighty one the, the next, next day. Yeah. So two hundred eight October thirteenth, which is the next day, is Chael Sonnen vs- versus Fedor, and that's going to be on the uh, on the Paramount Network. Okay, uh, Jay, do you watch Bellator? And if so, what what are you most interested in seeing out of all this stuff? Yeah, I mean, I usually dabble in the Bellator waters when there's a big fight that I'm super, super interested in. And I think they're a great organization for actually building their fighters up. I think they do a, a fantastic job of doing that. And some of the the acquisitions that they've made sort of because of the fallout with, with fighter pay in UFC has been yeah. really, really good. And they have the money to do that, being a, a Viacom-owned entity. I, I think this, you know, signing this fight... Uh, it, well, first of all, let me talk about the Grand Prix. I love the whole Grand Prix format. I mm-hmm. think it's really exciting. Uh, I wish it, I wish UFC did it more. Obviously, not the whole one night thing. That's that's old news. You know, mm-hmm. this is a, th- that yeah, yeah, movie yeah, or whatever. You're, you're enough fighting, and then after right. you get almost TKO'd, you go fight another. Fight. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Health reasons. That's just ridiculous. Right. So uh, this Gegard Mousasi Roy McDonald fight. That I mean, that could be that could be a main event for a UFC fight. Mm. And and I don't mean that in like a dismissive way towards Bellator, but that's, that's a a prime prime fight. It's also interesting considering that it's at middleweight. Roy McDonald also has a a fight already booked for, uh, for the welterweight Mm -hmm. tournament against John Fitch as well. It's, I don't know the last time that's ever happened for the same fighter to have two fights booked, uh, upcoming. So, I'm I'm excited for it, and I'm I'm honestly ready for this heavyweight tournament to just be over and done with. <laughs> I kind of forgot that it even happened. Like I thought Fedor retired, and then I remembered that he was fighting Shell Sonnen, and I thought he retired, and then yeah, I, I'm I'm all about the sort of uh, retiree leagues of MMA. I think <laughs> I think they can't they can be fun uh, for people, but yeah, let's just get it done. Let's get it out of the way. Rook, are you interested in any of these fights? I mean, yeah. The, Vanderlei versus Rampage 3 uh, at heavyweight? That's weird to me, right? Uh, uh, yeah, why yeah. are these guys... Like, in golf, they have... Uh, what do they call The Master's League or Master's yep. Division where yeah. all the old golfers go and yeah, play. All the seniors. Yeah, all the se- seniors tour. That's yeah, yeah. The seniors tour, they play each other and they go and, and do whatever. And it's just for bragging rights, really, yeah, yeah. in the clubhouse. So, to me, that's when I see something like this with Rampage and all the stuff that he's already done. I mean, he's, it, wasn't he acting? I thought he was acting for a while. So, what is this all about? And, and uh, why? 
Wanderlei coming back into this situation after what happened with him. Uh, you know, and these guys fought already, right? Uh, uh, twice, they fought twice. Silva won the first one in 2003 yes. and then uh, and won the rematch. So, uh, like... Uh, well, then, then Rampage won in Oh, UFC. their last fight. Yeah, yeah, right, right. When they were getting older. Yes, yes. Rampage finally won one as they were when getting older. they were getting older. older the first time. Yeah, yeah right, exactly. So Yeah, this is, like the, this is like the senior store, except you get kicked in the head. Right, so. I mean, right. Well, you know, some of these guys, they feel that way when they lose. So, uh, But the Mosasi mcdonald fight is interesting because these are both... Uh, former, like you said, former UFC guys, and and Masasi's record is insane. Yeah. You know, forty four yeah. six and two. That's madness to me. How can you fight that much and not die? Mm. Uh, and then you have Rory McDonald's twenty and four. But like th- these are two champions slamming into each other. I always love that, especially the chance for one of them to become a two division champion. That's always interesting. So you know, those guys are hungry to put on a good fight and do what they need to do. I remember McDonald against his stuff with Robbie Lawler. That yeah. was that's, that's when that, I first got to yeah. know him because I was a big Robbie Lawler guy, and I'm like, who the hell is this guy taking him out or, or going up on him in that fight in that rematch so there was a lot to me uh, the, uh, that i enjoyed about mcdonald and i'll see what he does with Musasi. but apparently are these guys at a catch weight like how does this work no i mean they're going for the middleweight title so, so they can they, weigh how, just the middle that's, just, the middleweight uh, just the middleweight title so so, okay. so rory's going up so he's not going to lose anything if he loses the fight he won't G- lose the title yeah gay guard will okay uh what's interesting too is that these are two fighters that you know, that are still in the relative prime of yeah. their careers. Yeah. You know, usually Bellator has kind of got a name for getting older fighters, right? Yeah, I mean, sure. you, if you look at that... It's heavy- like the MLS. They'll get the old soccer players to come play. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what the heavyweight <laughs> tournament is, right? Yeah. It's, a, it's a bunch of old guys in there. Yeah. And, and so this is more interesting because it actually kind of has meaning in, in the terms yeah. of the landscape of MMA. Yeah. Because um, Rory McDonald has a win over Tyrone Woodley. Yeah. yeah. So yep. I don't know if they, he would win right now, but at least he does have that win over him. Why is Fedor fighting? Because uh, he wants money, I guess. I mean... <laughs> he was so... It was pathetic to watch it at the end. And of course, Fedor could find me and put his hand through my chest, so I don't want to say, like, I'm not trying to get... It was just... It was tough to watch when you loved this unbeatable beast that he was for so long to see him become, like, so so beatable at the end. Why go back in the ring? Why keep trying? This is like Roy Jones Jr. He kept getting knocked out for those yeah. five, six fights at the end of his career. Like, I know you love doing it, but at some point, brother, you got to stop. And so I don't know... What could happen here with Chael Son? I don't know what. I, I, to me, it just seems weird. Like you're watching your two dads fight, or something. Like your uncles, your uncle and your dad have a fight out in the backyard. To me, it's like at some point they're no longer in that tip-top shape. So, what kind of fight are you going to get? Is it going to be two dudes laying on top of each other trying to submit each other? Or is it going to be a real exciting fight? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Fedor will come out and and try to swing for the fences and KO Probably Chael, better. but yeah. Chael's gonna he's gonna shoot right away. Yeah, and. If he shoots and takes down Fedor, he can probably be doing that all night long. Yeah. And then maybe Ika get a decision victory. But, you know, Matt Mitro and Ryan Bader fighting on the night before. You like that match. Uh, well, that one's more relevant. Uh, where it's a more interesting fight. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, and, and the winner of that is going to fight the winner of Chelsea and, and Fedor. So, oh. for, for the heavyweight belt, basically. <laughs> What's funny about the the welterweight <laughs> thing is is... You have uh, Fedor's going to have a belt. Is that what you're trying to? Is it a possibility? Yeah, I don't okay. think it's happening. I, okay. Honestly, I, I I think Chael's going to win that fight. Uh, I think he's okay. just going to going to take him down, and you know, um, and then I think uh, Bader will probably win that Mitrione fight. Mm. Bader will beat. Probably Bader will take on Son, and that's my guess. And Bader will win. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, what's funny is that that Rory McDonald has that welterweight fight. It, it's in the tournament, right? Jay? Yeah, it's uh, yeah first round um, uh, against John Fitch, one of the most dominant welterweights <laughs> of all time. Probably one of the most boring fighters. Yeah, yeah, he, well. yeah, yeah. He's uh, <laughs> so he's fighting for the belt that he already has. I, I don't even know. so I'm not a hundred percent sure about this either. Like, I, I'm I think. What's on the line is a shot at the title. Okay. Um, that he already has. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. So, so if he wins, I don't know. I, I bet maybe he'll get like a, a Grand Prix belt as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. It, ask Roko about soccer trophies. There's okay. three trophies you can win in Premier League. <laughs> That's no true. one knows how sports work anymore. Okay. <laughs> That's true. You can. Um, all right. So, you know, speaking of the Seniors League, <laughs> I've got. Uh, <laughs> Tito Ortiz versus Liddell 3 has an official fight date, November 24th. 
This is under Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy. This is his first MMA event that he's promoting. He's saying he's doing it because of fighter pay and that this is the most money that Tito and uh, Chuck will ever get. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to take place at Inglewood, California at the Forum. Uh, Tito is 43 years old. Liddell is 48. What the hell? Does anyone care and will anyone watch? <laughs> that That's the question. Is is Really, I mean, the thing is, is look, these both these fighters were, you know, they're all-time greats. They're Hall of Famers. They're way past their prime. Yeah. Liddell uh, beat Tito twice, knocked him out both times. So what are we doing here? So is it a case where Tito has waited out where Liddell's age has caught up with him yeah. and then he can take him down? Because, <laughs> T well, Tito has been the mo more active. I mean, he, yeah. he it, actually he beat Chel Sonnen. Yeah. Uh, so is... Is it a, a case of where well, Liddell's kind of a lot older now, and Tito is going to exact his revenge on him? What kind of revenge are you going to get on a guy like this? this is, makes no sense. <laughs> this is like Dwight Howard now dunking on Shaq. I finally got you. Yeah, because I got you know too old. Where is the pride and like where do you get the bragging rights for this? It, it makes no sense. Yeah, Liddell hasn't fought since 2010. Uh, when he was getting destroyed by Rich yeah. Franklin. So now you've got this idea of, now you've got uh, Tito Ortiz coming and trying to avenge this thing that have some guy, hey, listen, I'm a Latino, I get it. it you, anybody beats you, I still want to beat the Patriots. I, it just, <laughs> it's frustrating when you lose someone over and over again, but at some point, you just got to accept it. You couldn't do it on the days when you had the chances to do it. So what is the point of doing it now? Do you know what I'm saying? I, I don't I don't get it. And and yeah, if Ortiz beat Chael Sonnen, it makes it even worse that Chael Sonnen is fighting Fedor. It makes it even worse how that's going to go down for me. It makes no, even less sense for me to watch that. And it's just weird that De La Hoya would choose to do this. How is this coming out the gate in a smart way? I get that he loves to. I went to an MMA thing they had at the Forum. It's mm -hmm. a great place to watch MMA. It really is a fantastic place I, to watch I've MMA. watched concerts there. I watched uh, Game of Thrones live at the oh, Forum. Nice. nice. Um, and then I also watched uh, Pearl Jam at the, at the Forum as well. Great venue. Gotcha. It's actually actually better venue sound wise yeah. than than Staples Center. Staples Center is very I've watched sports there and I watched a few concerts yeah, there and yeah. the concerts just yeah, the acoustics aren't as good. Right. But I mean this is a sporting event. I have seen I've I've, I've they re redid the forum. It's a lot better to go to. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um so yeah, I will not be attending this Can uh, you send live. me as a collider representative? If you pay you my ticket, I will cover. Suck, you know what sucks is I, I I got <laughs> tickets from Christian, and what? it was no, no, no. This was uh, what a year, year and a half ago. Oh, okay. When when I got tickets to Chael Sonnen versus oh my god, who who did he fight when he came back? Uh, I forgot. He was fighting someone. He, he came. He went to the Bellator. Okay. And and Christian had gotten tickets. All right. And I couldn't go that night. It oh, sucked. okay. It sucked. Me and my friend, uh, we already had plans. With our girlfriends, which is now his wife, for dinner, and was right. at a place that like we had, they had gotten reservations months ago, and Bolt and he's a huge Chell Sun fan, and I had the tickets, and I had to give them up. I I don't know who took them. Did you take them? I didn't take them. No. So someone else took them. Oh, maybe I did. All right, guys. So the last segment that we're gonna have here before we sign off is Twitter questions. You can tweet us at Collider. Well, actually, you can tweet us. At Collider Sports. Do we have a Collider Sports? Yeah, we have a Collider Sports. No, I don't know if we have a Collider Sports Twitter <laughs> handle, but we do have, a uh, obviously, a YouTube we have a feed. Twitter. I know we have Collider feed. Games, Collider Videos. Yeah. Anyway, you can hashtag Collider MMA Takedown, and we'll answer your questions. We actually got a bunch of questions. We're going to answer a few today. We actually, if you ask some questions, we may actually answer those next week. We'll, we'll, we'll save them up. We, we got a lot of good stuff. So right. first one we have from is from Stephanie Kyle at Steph Vicious 23 UFC 230 at MSG doesn't have a main event yet. Since it's in New York, do you think John Jones could make his return to headline it? Uh, Jay, what do you think? What are the chances <laughs> about that? So, I saw a lot of uh, a lot of people asking this question, not yeah. not just via the, the Twitter questions, but even some through some other channels that I'll I'll pay attention to. I'm a little bit confused because I'm pretty sure that that fight has a main event, does it not? Doesn't 230... I mean, I, I know that no, the whole idea is... No, yeah, that's the co-main event, I think. I th I think so they, is that yeah. what they announced? They anna that's what's super confusing they to me. They haven't announced what the main event is. Yeah. yeah. Right, and, and that whole thing is really confusing to me because I think, D I think that fight, the Diaz fight, could 
carry the card on its own. The rest of the card is absolutely stacked. It mm-hmm. looks really, really good. Uh, the honest answer to that question is, I don't know. I don't know what John Jones is doing. I don't know what, um, how he's preparing for his, he's saying that he's, he's getting bulkier and he's getting stronger, but I mean, you just never know with that guy, but it does seem like they are withholding that spot for a very, very big fight. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's MSG, you know, they've had two cards there before and each one was stacked. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what's going on with John Jones and the USADA stuff. People are saying that he secretly knows that he will be, you know, because he's been in the testing pool. Like he will somehow be cleared and and be able to fight. Uh, and that right now he's just serving his suspension. And who knows? Fight Daniel Cormier. I mean, he's been talking a lot of crap about Daniel Cormier. Yeah. Like in an interview. What a he, shock! Yeah, he said that he was going to. He. He wants to take away Daniel Cormier's confidence. He's like, I'm going to beat you a third time. He's like, I'm going to take away all your confidence. He posted earlier today this um, this gif of these two girls street fighting. Yeah. And one of the girls head kicks the other one and knocks her out. Okay. Right? And he writes underneath it. He says something like, like, um, I don't think that girl was taking steroids or whatever, you know, basically insinuating that like it wasn't the steroids that led to him knocking out Daniel Cormier. So he's taking a lot of jabs at him. Uh, There's a lot of, you know, him talking about his, you know, KO power that he's developing. And so is it a possibility? Sure. I, I don't know. I think it's, I figured they'd want to hype it up more if, if he actually was coming back. Yeah, right. it's, it seems weird if they would. What do you think, Jay? Did, were you, did you already uh, apply? Yeah, I mean, like it seems... Yeah. yeah. I, I was just going to say that I think I think the thing with John Jones and this knockout power is that's always been the thorn in his side, right? Like, he's mm. he's never really had that knockout power. And I think he still wants to prove that. Unfortunately, listen, I like John Jones in the sense that I like watching him fight... Uh, you know, failed test or not failed test. They were, they were entertaining fights from a, an objective perspective. Sure. But at this point, he just continuously just breaks fans' heart with, with that. And it's like, what do you even make of his legacy at this point? Um, it, it's, it's really tough. If, if anything, I would love for the UFC just to be like, look, man, I, I we don't know what to do with you. Obviously, that's like a purist sort of mentality, mm. but – Listen, I'm a fight fan, so I'm going to watch him fight no matter what. But some of his shenanigans, especially with the incredible story that is Daniel Cormier, like, I mean, he's gone full villain mode. And I guess I can appreciate that to a certain extent from a storyline perspective. But, man, it's it's hard. To, it's a hard pill to swallow. Yeah. What are we doing here? Mr. Inspirational Stories fighting back. I got a wife now. I got all this kind of crap. Like, uh, I, I'm, I'm to me, I, I hate to be the dissenting voice. Uh, in this group here, but I think it's ridiculous. I don't give a shit if he comes back or he doesn't come back. I'm at that point where I'm done with him playing these games. I feel this way about any drug cheat in any of the sports. Yeah, Barry Bonds could say the same same thing. I was hitting home runs before I took steroids. Sure, that's not the point of the steroids. The steroids are to recover quickly. You can hit harder. You can get build build muscle mass quicker. That's what steroids do to you. And so those kinds of things are... I don't care that this girl scissor... I don't care about any of that shit. You were still on drugs. You were still... You failed the damn test. That's the thing. And twice. And so like to me, it's like, why do I have to give you the patience or the understanding? And I could give two shits to be honest with you that's that's the way i feel about it you had your chances i don't care how much crap you talk on Torm- cormier none of your victories are legitimate none zero if lesnar's v- victories are not legitimate when he was on the roids then neither are these so to me that's that's the ridiculousness of this whole thing yeah if he comes back great i won't care about the fight until he until he tests and that's weird right even when you watch the fight great fight let's see if he was clean there's no point to that you know what i'm saying it takes away the joy of what MMA is, which is these incredibly skilled men and women battling against each other to see who wins. When you throw the drugs into it, then you're cheating. And when you're cheating, I don't give a crap what your excuse is. If you're consistently being caught, then why why do you deserve any kind of understanding? I don't care that you got a wife and you found God and you got kids. None of that matters. What you did in the ring is what matters and what you did outside of it by taking drugs. So that's the thing that I focus on to me. If you're asking me purely, if he makes the head, he could, of course he could return 
it would be, uh, you know, Dana, Dana White has done more nefarious things in the past to sell tickets, and they haven't been selling tickets over the last few pay-per-views at the same level as before. So would he do this as a big splash? Sure, it's possible. And I don't think you'd hype it up quite as much as you do because of the drug stuff. So sure, it's possible. I just don't want to see it, to be honest with you. I don't want to see it. it, it uh, that's my uh, thoughts. All right. Uh, next question we have from Matthew Jasso uh, at Mr. J Ninja. What is your most disappointing championship loss? So I, I think he means like you watched a championship or title fight and the person you wanted to win ended up losing. Yeah. Uh, mine would be Leota Machida in the rematch with uh, Shogun. Uh, I was a huge, uh, or I am still a, a big Leota Machida fan. He's with Bellator now. Um, you know, at that time he was he was unstoppable, and yeah. he, he gets he gets KO'd. Uh, either it was like the end of the first round or the beginning of the second. I can't remember, but it was fairly early in the fight. And mm. just seeing him knocked out on the ground, I was like, "Oh, damn!" Like, <laughs> damn. Yeah, I mean, he, this is another guy. Like you, you talk about like he he wasn't even hardly losing any rounds, yeah. you know. Um, and he he destroyed Rashad Evans, and and so that was probably my most disappointing. Uh, Jay, it's a really interesting question because I don't think. I don't think I've ever really thought about because MMA is it's so you know it's such a prolific sport. There, there's no off season; it's always going yeah, on. Yeah. And, and I don't really have like the fandom of particular fighters like I would for a sports team. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's certain people that I enjoy watching, definitely. But I mean, I think one of the one of the more heartbreaking losses was. I think any time, well, let's see. So Forrest Griffin w was a, a champion at light heavyweight and he lost his belt to Rashad Evans. Yeah. And I believe at the time, I, I just thought that Forrest Griffin was such an icon, maybe not the mm -hmm. best fighter, maybe not the most technical fighter, but he was, he was a great story. He was, you know, it wasn't necessarily a Rocky story, but it felt like that, I think. And when he beat Rampage for that belt, yes. that was a shock. That was a huge, huge shock. And I just wanted him to reign forever as champion, and he <laughs> didn't. Then obviously he had the whole Anderson Silva fight when yeah. he ran out of the cage as soon as he got knocked, or as soon as the fight was over. And I think like his whole mystique as a fighter just sort of collapsed for me. And I just remember thinking at the time, like, man, this is a really big turning point to where you can't just be a good fighter in MMA. You have to be a well-rounded athlete. Mm -hmm. And it, it was an interesting time. Um, maybe not 100% the answer to the question, but that's the best I could do. Mm. Roka? Well, mine's more current, and uh, it is uh, from the female division. It's when Holly Holm lost to Maisha, Misha Tate. I know a lot of people loved yeah. Misha Tate, and uh, she had been fighting to get that belt, and you know, obviously Ronda, was, Ronda had been in her way multiple times. But to me, Holly beating Ronda, she was unbeatable. Mm. Everyone said Ronda was unbeatable. Holly did it with a kick to the face, and it was done. Mm. Great fight. She prepared correctly for it. Ronda didn't look like she was being caught out like a, like a Mike Tyson, Buster Douglas situation. She looked like she was ready to fight, and Holly just took her out. And I was so... I became such a massive fan of her for doing that, uh, and I'd followed her career and like her what she'd gone through to get to that position to be able to fight Ronda for the title, then to beat her and then to, to surrender it in a situation where she completely could have won that match against Maisha if she had yeah, just she was figured winning. out how to keep winning. her off. Of. She was winning if you had figured out how to keep Maisha um, or oh, Maisha, Maisha off of her, yeah. uh, then then it would have been done. But to see Maisha submit her, I just I was so disappointed, man, because it turns her into a fluke. Yeah. And that's not what you want from someone who works so hard to get in that position to pull off an incredible upset. Uh, you don't want them to lose in that way. And she's been unable to kind of climb back into the pictures ever since. And it's unfortunate. And she gave as good as she got with Cyborg. Yeah. She's a strong woman. And it's just unfortunate that she's not getting that shot again. And she does train with John Jones as well. So it's just unfortunate she's in that situation where she can't quite get there again. So th that was really disappointing overall for me because I wanted someone to beat Ronda and become the new queen for a while and it didn't happen. Uh, I, I do have one other one real quick. Yeah, I want to sure. throw another one out. Just a shout out to uh, to Kenny Florian, the, uh, the poor guy. He had, <laughs> I think it was like four title fights. Four title yeah. shots <laughs> and he, he just never ever got got the win and mm. it was like the the bright lights really got to him in that moment i mean this is a guy who had to climb back every single time he lost to get to that point 
and he just couldn't do it. And, and it was such a heartbreaking thing to sort of experience at the time. And then when he finally retired, it was like, man, you just couldn't get it done. So that was, that was always kind of a bummer thing to me. Yeah. Uh, all right. Next question from at Mr. Nathan, Mr. Uh, what are your feelings on the WWE like elements making their way into UFC slash MMA? Do you think that in the long run it will help or hurt the sport as far as its audience is concerned? Larger than life personalities have helped boxing in its history. It's oh. a, the, the, Roka, why don't you answer this first yeah. as, as the guy who, who also <laughs> hosts and is a freaking panelist on uh WWE related podcasts yeah. here at Collider. And also created the Outlaw with Kristen uh, yeah. Harloff. So yeah, here's the deal. Um I like them, but the problem is not everybody can do them. Mm-hmm. And when you <laughs> see people who can't do them, like we've seen in the Schmodown sometimes, it's real transparent. And and they the, and it kind of takes away uh, a lot of the joy you would normally have for a match like this. So to me, I, yes, I think it helps in the long run because you have people like Connor who really like, blow it up, yeah. or or it, not necessarily, or Ronda, I guess to a degree. Ronda mm-hmm. was more quiet than Connor, obviously, but she was no less destructive during her time. You you have that kind of thing that's really helpful. But the John Jones Cormier thing, then it becomes like, well, what's the? This is a mixed message. I thought you were a guy who'd found God and you're changing a life and positive, uplifting. Unless your name is Daniel Cormier, mm-hmm. then I want to kick you. In the side of the head. So, like, those are those things that are to me are a little strange, and not everybody can do them. And I think that's the danger here. Yeah, will it help the sport? Sure, it has, but can everybody do it? Because once you set an expectation and you don't meet the expectation consistently with numerous people, then the fans start to drop away that we're enjoying that those kinds of elements uh, in your in your uh, in your sport. Yeah, I mean, Connor is someone who talks the talk and walks the walk. He's the Hulk Hogan of, yeah. the, of MMA. And you see someone like Chael, who has a great he he's great on the mic. Yeah. He, you know, after the Anderson Silva stuff, his his record kind of became like hit and miss. You know, and, yeah. and so he became he he does a great you know podcast as well. Um, but you know, as far as the MMA fighter, he's less relevant because he's not being able to you know achieve the levels right. that he he had before. And it's just one of those things where like you have to actually be able to perform to back up kind of the smack talking you do because if you just smack talk and then you get knocked out, yeah. Like, who cares? Exactly. Nobody cares. I mean, also, people bring this up because of what happened at the end of the Cormier-Stipe thing. Right. That yep. Brock Lesnar comes in there, he shoves him, everyone knows it's staged. It's staged. You know, it's the, it's one of those things where some people think it's fun, some people think it's cringeworthy. Yeah. Um, Cormier would have jumped him. Yeah. If it's real <laughs> and he pushed him, Cormier would have jumped him. Yeah. It's, it makes yeah. no sense. So, for me, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where I don't mind it if it doesn't... If it doesn't come off too staged, come off <laughs> too luck. faked. Good yeah. luck with that. But someone like Connor, he's fully right. bought in, right? right? Those are the, natural. The, yeah. yeah, yeah. The, there's, the, the naturals the, are rare, man. That's the, the yep. reason why he's as big as he is, is because he can do that. Yeah. They don't have classes teaching them how to cut promos no. at MMA class, you know? No. Well, no. the other side of the story, though, with, with this whole discussion, I. I'm I'm for uh, accentuating some of the drama in general sure. in sports. I think it I think it makes it more interesting. I, I'm a soccer fan like Roca, and that is a sport that is, I mean all sports have drama, but it, it's a semi year round sport as well. And there's just a ton of it. I think the UFC needs to do a better job at sort of it's it sort of accentuating that that drama. Yeah, they have the sort of the countdown series and and the the whatever they do the, their little documentary things that mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure all of oh I don't know five people watch. <laughs> it's just like it, they just don't do a, a great job at sort of telling the stories of some of the fighters and it, which is always a little bit interesting to me considering as Brendan Job puts it a lot of the time we live in the entertainment era of MMA mm-hmm. with a lot of money on the lines these these big money fights. And and they do it for certain people. We we see that they're potentially well. They are streamlining Darren Till. Maybe he's the next golden goose, so to speak. Uh, they've done it for some people, and it's been an absolute failure. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I think they might be operating out of their wheelhouse. I mean, uh, they work. For, uh, who are they owned by? The W is it W M E? Yeah, W M E. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're they. You know they have a lot of stars and movie uh, people. They just need to get some people to write some some scripts for them or something because <laughs> yeah. I just don't think they do a great job. 
Yeah. This, might, this might be a new job I explore. Yeah. It's gonna, there you go. They pay me for yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In the long run, yeah, I, I think it will help MMA as long as they keep it. Try and make it something based off of real, you know, real life rivalries. Yeah. I think that's why a lot of people like the Daniel Cormier, John Jones thing, because it's real. They feel the they, heat. Yeah, yeah. That's right. not made up. That's not like, hey, cool, right. whatever, you know, and like behind the scenes, they're like shaking hands and hugging or whatever. Right. They genuinely hate each other. Yeah. So, all well, right. And that's a, that's a thing too, where the rest of the, the media outside of the UFC real, if you're interested in something like that, there are a ton of media outlets out there besides this show th that you can find people talking about stuff like that. So mm -hmm. uh, the online media has always been a fantastic place to support those stories that maybe the UFC isn't telling. No. All right. Last question we have uh, at I Sound Taller asks, <laughs> what's your preferred setting for watching MMA events? Do you like to watch it live in a bar or at home with friends? Also, is there any interest in all of you doing a live reaction video for pay-per-view events? Uh, well, let me answer that, that last part first. I'd say, yeah, I think for... I think the Conor Khabib one, I think we'll probably stick a camera for maybe the last two fights and just let it roll. Yeah. Like, it won't be like a real reaction, just kind of us in the audience, uh, who, all, anyone who comes to the studio to watch it, and just, if anything cool happens, it's cool, see yeah. what our reaction is. I don't think it'll be a regular thing where we're going to all get together and do live reactions, mm -hmm. only only for the big, big stuff, like, like yeah. Connor Khabib. Um, my preferred setting, I like to watch it, I like to watch it at the bar. Yeah. I I, I do. Even though there's, you know, something, you, look, you're not paying all that money to, like, eat the food and drink the drinks at the bar when you're doing it at home. And even with friends, it's fun, but there's nothing like being at a bar filled with a bunch of people who are totally into the same thing you are yeah. and erupting at every shot, every everything mm -hmm. that happens. Like, every time, you know, I, I've seen most of my UFC fights at a bar, mm -hmm. and it's just, it's I, I find it much more fun. I agree. At a bar is the best for me because, like you said, Dennis, you're surrounded by people who understand the sport and know when to react, when to talk, when not to talk, when to let the thing breathe. And some of my favorite things are hearing conversations between people I don't know and like having an issue with the things they're talking about, but just quietly keeping <laughs> it to myself and like listening to what they're saying and 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 kind of and then eventually, eventually someone just taps you on that shoulder and says like, "Don't you think this this or that or this or that?" And, and you're just like, "Yeah, yeah." So like I, I go, I usually go and watch it uh if i don't watch it in the hills with my friend dan pan ocean i'll go and watch it in uh manhattan beach at this bar with mm. some friends and we'll just sit there basically the back room is reserved for that four screens back there and you just have a great time watching it and everyone's like cheering along with it one way or the other and offering their thoughts as and their own commentary as it goes along which is kind of the joy of it for me yeah, so those interactions that you were talking about actually drive me up a wall. Like, I, I, can't, I can't stand it. I absolutely despise it. Um, but what I will agree with both of you guys is the thing that, that's so infectious about those, uh, those scenarios is that collective excitement yes. when something really oh, awesome yeah. happens. And unless you're doing like a, a watch party in, in your own house, it, it's very difficult to recreate a scenario like that. Um, if I'm really, really, really into a fight and excited or a card, if there's a full card that I'm obsessed with, like some of the ones that we've talked about today, I, I'm totally fine sitting in the comfort of my own home and really breaking them down and examining it mm. or something like that. Um, I think there's a, a there's just different ways to watch things like that, right? You can watch it for the pure enjoyment as a fan, or you can break it down if it's your job, if you're a journalist, or now if we're doing the show in a more analytical sort of way. So, and maybe the bar scenario is not the best. You know, I might not be able to judge a, a round or two if mm -hmm. I've had a few beers in mm -hmm. me, got a few <laughs> hot uh, chicken wings, or I personally like the uh the the buffalo shrimp at hooters that's what i prefer <laughs> so uh yeah i might not be able to call a fight the best way possible there. yeah i don't think that's the ideal scenario to analyze a fight but I, I do like that especially when big stuff like i was in a bar when uh anderson silva uh came back and beat chelson after yeah. being you yeah. know basically beat down for four rounds uh I, when Anderson Silva lost to Chris Weidman, got yeah. a TKO. That was, yeah. People going nuts. The Ronda fights, you know, the bar was packed and there was tons of like women there watching, yeah. cheering Ronda on. Just like there's been so many crazy things like 
in the UFC that's happened. I've watched in a big crowd, and it's just you get that kind of excitement and buzz. You ride the wave, man. Like the like I was I've been referencing throughout this whole podcast that second match with uh, with Connor and. Diaz, the waves, the riding the waves back and forth is fantastic. The Holly Holm uh, match with uh, Misha Tate, I saw that in a bar, and seeing the disbelief in people's faces as it was happening was incredible. And we're all like jumping up on our chairs, like staring at the television, getting close, uh, going like, "What is happening?" You know, those kinds of things. It's great to kind of know that you're uh, amongst people who feel the same way about yeah. it and riding that wave with it. So it's fun. Yeah. All right, guys, that's it uh, for our first ever episode of uh, Collider's MMA podcast, MMA Takedown. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll be back next week. Uh, we've got to figure out if we're going to do it Monday or Tuesday. One, one of those two days we'll, we'll do it. And, uh, we'll go over kind of the topics of, uh, that happened over the past week. Uh, so, Roka, where can people find you? Oh, you guys can always find me at the Roka Says on Twitter and on Instagram there, and also, of course, uh, hosting a lot of stuff on the Collider Sports YouTube channel and podcast feed. We just dropped the new Premier League recap, uh, Sports Time. We just did the draft, which you can find there uh, soon, and all of that uh, there on Collider Sports. So uh, enjoy all the content we have there and, of course, all the Collider stuff I do here. Jay. You can find me at Jay Williams, J to the A to the Y to the E. It's the same for both Twitter and Instagram. Find me also every single week breaking down everything in the Collider world with my buddy Ryan Selling on Collider Afterthoughts that is found on the Movie Talk podcast feed and discussing all things pop culture, music, movies, and television on Sight and Sound. We have a YouTube channel as well as a, as well as a podcast. Just look for it wherever podcasts are found. And you guys can find me on Twitter at ThinkHero or Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. Like I said before, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Collider Sports. Also subscribe to the podcast feed. That's a Collider Sports. It's, a, it's its own dedicated feed, and this show will be up there every week. So thanks for tuning in, and thanks for to Roca and Jay for uh, being here, and we'll see you guys next time.